Happy Friday, happy full moon, happy lunar eclipse. If you guys are aware that it's 9 a.m. Pacific time on a full moon Friday, we have a lunar eclipse coming up around 1030 a.m. We got a lot of energies, a lot of things happening behind the scenes, and I wanted to have a special episode with my friend and mentor, author of The Closet Spiritualist, Franco Romero. Many of you guys who have been following me for some time have seen him. He's been on my show more than anyone um five plus and i've lost count now franco really? counting anymore <laughs> um this is a special episode to give everyone uh whether you're on live or replay give you a state of the union so to speak or what i like to call the state of the unity consciousness what's happening in the world you know my podcast now is much more about consciousness spirituality around this awakening that's happening in the world psychedelics shamanism. So today we're focused on what's happening out there in the world. And Franco is is here to, to bless us with his wisdom. And we're just gonna have a conversation and see where it goes. So Franco, maybe just in case people haven't seen you before, maybe give a little bit of your, your background, a little bit sure. of your story to be able to open up the conversation. Sure. Uh, first of all, hello. Nice to see you again. It's been a while, as my kids would say. It's been a hot minute since we've actually had a chance to to talk like this. Um, I thought you were going to say we we're going to get a state of the universe report because <laughs> yes, that's better. Thank you. It wasn't. I, I heard unity consciousness, but you, <laughs> universe is so much better. Yeah, uh, that's what came through when right when you said that. I was like, oh yeah, this is like a state of the universe. Um, so just long and short. For us and for those who are listening, um, I first uh, was acquainted or, or introduced to you a couple of years back through a mutual friend who has known me for some time. And at that time, I was finishing up a book, The Closet Spiritualist, and it was a chronology of sorts of the time that I have experienced here on this planet. Um, since the moment that I had died when I was six months old to when I started to have visions and dreams of that experience about 15 or 16 years later when I was in my teens. And so the book kind of kind of goes through all the ups and downs, the trials and tribulations of realizing that one died, coping with that, <laughs> understanding what happened there, and then kind of dealing with all the aftermath. Because for me, as well as for a lot of people who have near-death experiences, um, we typically come back and we are disconnected from this world in many different ways. We don't feel like we we really fit in here. And so at least the first half of the book is all about how I tried to manage that and in many times suppressed it, which is something that now I work with a lot of students to not do that <laughs> because you're not, you know, if these things are coming through, changes in your life are coming through that make you feel disconnected, there's a reason for it. And it's not because there's anything wrong with you, but because you're basically waking up. And so the other half of the book talks about the process of waking up and and what's going on in the world and, and where do you fit in and and actually the fact that you're a special, unique individual of being mm -hmm. here to help not just yourself, but also many others as they transition into this awakening. And so that book came out a couple of years ago. And um, since then, it, uh, it was kind of a slow burn, but now it's really taken off. And um, I've been fortunate enough now to uh, be on many shows like yours, and um, people are receiving the information and the, and the messages that I brought back and the teachings that I brought back, which um, have been lost for thousands of years, and um, teach people to come back to who they are as, as an inner child. Not the way we always kind of you know talk about inner ch child kind of stuff, but a more powerful, omnipotent essence of God, child. Um, it's been well received and it's great timing because we're at this point now where we're just about to experience and have been already experiencing the awakening of Mother Earth, Gaia. And now that's translating into what people are feeling and have been feeling for some time now. But really, in, the intensity has picked up quite a bit over the last several weeks and months because that is now translating 
into a massive awakening that is occurring globally around the world. And I've talked to people all over the world and everybody's experiencing this now. So that's kind of it in a nutshell. So thank you for having me. That was beautiful. That was perfect. And you said the word, you said some interesting things about suppression. And when I met you, I was in full on denial and suppression. I didn't even, to my knowledge still, I don't think I have had a near death experience, but I was in a really dark space where I was like wanting to die because I had so much grief, so much childhood trauma. So you talked about the inner child. So I was suppressing my intuition, yeah. my true nature and purpose. I I was so scared and I feel like a lot of people, if they weren't feeling it then, like I was, that could maybe summarize a little bit what people are feeling now, that anxiety, fear, uncertainty, uh, especially around money. A lot of people are having financial issues and just really still looking outside themselves for the answers. So maybe because there's so many directions we can go sure. with this. Um, I know. Maybe let's talk about that awakening of Mother Earth and why people are feeling this way. Would, would that be an OK place? To, yeah, I think that'd be start? a great that'd be a great place to start. And, and, and just I'm going to just take one step back just before we get into that. You know, some people, you know, I use suppression. The, the more common word is is resistance. And um, as you know, because of, of what you do with your teaching and your work, but um, Either way, however you want to describe it, it it's it's just this, this unwillingness to jump into the unknown. And uh, even though the unknown really seems to be more in line with who you are, I mean, even though you feel like it makes more sense to you, uh, you resist it because you're scared. Um, the, the other thing, and it, I want to make sure that I don't forget it, but you said something else. So I said something else that triggered something else. And then you said something else that triggered something in me. The inner child, the inner child, childhood trauma. The, the, um, that well, it'll come back to me if it's important enough, it, it'll come back to me. But so we'll just go back into the whole mother earth thing. And, and this, you know, it's always kind of hard to to, to get into a discussion like this and, and not kind of want to say a disclaimer, you know, this all fits in, even though this may sound esoteric to some people, uh, this really does make a lot of sense if you allow yourself to sort of leave your belief systems at the door and just kind of listen and let your heart sort of open up to this because there is this idea that earth is just earth. It's just a planet and it's not the case. Earth is a soul. It's a being. And it typically is referred to as Gaia or, or Mother Earth, a, a feminine energy. Um, you've been, you and I have been talking about this for, for quite some time. And I've been telling you that there was going to be this new birth that was going to happen here. And this really coincides a lot with so many things that people have heard, whether it's the Mayan calendar or what they have been taught or read in, in, in Christian textbooks or what have you, or other indigenous uh, religious groups. I mean, I, I talk to students who are from the Hindu faith, the Muslim faith, the Judaic faith. I mean, everything points to a time where everything starts to wake up to something new, a rebirth into something new. And that rebirth is how always has been sort of the topic of discussion as to when this was going to happen. And some folks up until not too long ago were thinking it would happen sometime in the next 50 years, 30 years, 100 years, you, you know, somewhere in that time frame. Even but wasn't I, 2012 kind of around that? Wasn't that part 2012 of it? 2012, according to the Mayans, yes. And and so, so now I think everybody's starting to realize there's a real big consensus now, or at least there seems to be one coming together um, where people are starting to realize that that, that time of rebirth um, mm -hmm. is actually happening right now. And the first stage of that is with the rebirth of this humongous energy of consciousness we call Mother Earth, where once that happens, the way I describe it is it's kind of like a baby when you take your first breath of life, you inhale. And so she is inhaling her first okay. breath of life. And now she is exhaling. And kind of like the yin and yang, the 
oxygen and carbon dioxide. We breathe in oxygen. We let out the carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide nature brings in the carbon dioxide, gives out oxygen. So it's this yin yang type of an arrangement. Mother Earth is breathing out life. We're inhaling that. And what that means is that we're inhaling fifth dimensional energies. Um, and when that happens, it changes everything in terms of our genetic structure. And I, I know that gets a little techy and whatnot, but but that's what a lot of people are starting to realize. And when I say a lot of people, people in the in the community of of um, these thought these thought provoking people and the science around it is now starting to realize there's something a dynamic happening here. And the next part of that dynamic is us inhaling all this, which is why we're experiencing so many real crazy things right now because the lunar eclipse and the solar eclipse are really, and I'm not an astrological person, so you could probably find a lot of people that could do a better job of, of describing this, but what they've shown me, and when I say they, I, I forgot to mention that I came back with a lot of clairvoyant abilities and I speak to a collective known as Caleb and, and everybody has access to this, but in any event, they tell me that that the that the moon and sun and these events of these eclipses they're kind of like combinations on a lock and when they're dialed up right and they're lined up right it's kind of like one of those locks where you have the numbers and if you don't yeah. quite if you don't quite get the number exact <laughs> even though you get the whole thing pretty much lined up it doesn't open but when it does actually line up exactly like it is right now then you can open up a lock and in this particular case mm -hmm. what's opening up is a massive download of energy which people are feeling in all ways and shapes and forms the people who don't know what's happening really to them and are not aware of who of what of what's happening in general they're feeling it in terms of fear of all mm -hmm. forms um, whether that's depression or doubt or insecurities or you name it I mean you name it and it could be pretty significant. Um, and for those who are starting to manage what they're, you know, being aware and manage and trying to stop being over overrun by these waves, because they're pretty massive waves, yeah. and they're starting to ride them, you know, like a surfboard. Um, they're the ones that are coping with it in a slightly different way. Well, they're still getting hit by it, but they're starting to feel like they, they're a little bit more in control. And then you have those who are actually so prepared for this and in tune with themselves that they're actually becoming the wave. And so it's all a series of things, but it's a massive, 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 massive shift into fifth dimension that's happening right now. And the planet and, and humanity won't be the same after this period. And do you have any guidance today? Because I know it's shifting on yeah. what, is, what is the timeline of this period? What does that look like? Well, it's been happening for some time. You probably know that. You've seen some major shifts probably happening to your to your clients for the last couple of weeks. Um, and it's probably been before then. The thing that most that I tell people is that if you're feeling these these, let's call them insecurities or fears, um, the the immediate reaction that people typically have is oh you know like a victim kind of reaction where it's like oh my god I'm right you know what's happening to me what's wrong what's going on I can't deal with this. With my students, I just try to get them to just try to be. I know that's going to sound abstract, but it's actually not that difficult to do. It's just to be in that stillness, just to just to know that the stuff that's happening is mm -hmm. actually happening for a reason that's actually for for the betterment of you and humanity. It's giving you a lot of energy of awareness that you're going to use in the, in the coming months to help you wake up. So just be easy on yourself. If you're not really like handling this well, then you know do what you can to minimize your day. I mean, just relax and be with yourself as much as possible. And if you if you can't do that because you don't, your life doesn't allow it for for that. You're busy. You're running around and stuff. Just try to be as much as you can present that this is just a, an event that's going on, and it will blow by. It will go by. And there's nothing wrong with it. We often get we just often because I was all I was of that mind too that whenever I would get into a depression or something, a negative energy, I would just totally blame myself for it. You know, like something was wrong with me. There's nothing, absolutely nothing right now that if you're feeling this, 
that is your fault. It is just happening as kind of a, 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 it's not even a purge, it's a download. You're really getting prepared for something massively good in the months ahead. So just, just bear with it. Well, and you reminded me a few times, maybe more than a few times, if I'm honest, right? <laughs> that the birthing canal, if you guys think about this, it's such a great analogy. Even if you haven't given birth, like I've given birth twice and oh my God, right? That the contractions are painful and, 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 and there's literally been proof that even as you as a baby going through the birthing canal, or even if it's a C-section, there can be trauma micro traumas, you know, your neck can be in pain and you're like being shoved through this tiny, tiny hole. Right. And that, yeah. Anyway. So That's I remember an analogy said, though. Yeah. And I remember going, Oh, okay. Since I've given birth and I felt that pain and then just what I've studied with, you know, people that have told me about them re reliving the trauma of going through the, the birthing canal. I learned about that through psychedelic community people are able to, I think, connect the dots with what that is like. And it's also why my husband and I call our, our, our ceremonial space now the Lotus Throne. The Lotus represents rebirth, resurrection, renewal. Um, you know, Easter wasn't that long ago, Passover, whatever you celebrate, if you celebrate. And, and if you think about the resurrection of the Christ, I mean, hello, miraculous, but extremely he went through a lot of pain and, and torture. So I think some of those analogies might help people recognize that they're not going crazy, that this is normal. It's just how you hold yourself through it. You helped me because I was go, 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 do, do, do. I do see this in a lot of people that come to me as well. And I, I, I thankfully, cause I don't know where I'd be today. I had to choose spaciousness, what I call giving myself more downtime, less time on the phone, you know, waking up and instead of reaching for the phone right away to meditate, pray, set up sacred space to go within. Right. Yeah. Um, I remember you telling me that. And at first I was like, what? I already meditate. <laughs> Franco, what are you talking about? Right. Yeah, what that, I didn't recognize. That was putting it nicely, Lois. <laughs> Yeah, everybody knows Franco's like, we, he, him and I have had uh, these experiences. Well, not everybody, maybe I'm sharing that honestly for the first time, but um, I was pretty stubborn. And so that's why I bring Franco back. And um, if you go back to our first podcast, you can see I'm 30 pounds heavier. Hello. Um, hmm. If that doesn't tell you something about my choices for listening to Franco, creating space, having more downtime, which is so counterintuitive to what society has, has programmed us these few thousands of years in this patriarchal masculine energy dominance of go, 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 sell, 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 do more, buy more, consume more. I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll be, I'll be quiet now. If, if there's anything else, <laughs> I get really passionate no, about the you're, topic. You're on, you're on a roll. <laughs> go, go. <laughs> Um, no, I think but you, you hit on a couple of other things and I want to just to express something because I know that when we first started talking and I said, you know, you go into yourself and a lot of people don't really understand that because nobody's ever been taught that. Mm -hmm. uh, nobody. Uh, and, and if you did, it was kind of a, a scary place to go. Um, so a lot of the work that I do, and it's kind of like your Lotus work. So a lot of the work that I do with, with people today is that I... I really take them to a safe place and in safe places is, is literally the, the womb, the, the sort of the, the, the inner part of the vaginal area of a woman, which is the vesica, uh, which is the womb for the universal soul. Uh, so I take them into the vesica and allow them to relive themselves again from birth, from the moment that they were actually conceive actually from the spiritual birth, which is much before, way, way before they actually come into this world as a physical being. But it's so that they can feel safe in a place where they remember, because this isn't some sort of a nice exercise of imagery. It's an actual place that you belong, that you know you've always been there before inside mm -hmm. this womb of the universal soul. And so we're basically talking about the same thing. And the, the irony or not the irony, the coincidence is that this energy that's coming in 
we, we can call it Christ consciousness or Buddha consciousness, whatever. But the way that I tell people, it's also the divine feminine. It, it, it really is an energy that's bringing in a, a significant balance to a, to a system that has been unbalanced for quite some time because of the life or the game that we chose to live in this, in this reality. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of good news in all of this and people need to be aware that the, what, we, we, what, what they have been living under as normal is not normal. It's, it's, it's the way that I describe it. It's subnormal, normal. Lois, I think I, I sent you a, a little clip la yesterday and I told you the normal, there's this, there's this clip that I sent her that, that basically expresses somebody who's in a, in a sheer state of bliss. Mm. And, and, and that is normal. That's what we, that's where we come from. All of us, you don't have to have a near death experience to, to have that experience. But, but what we're living in right now, subnormal. And, and by the way, I do remember now what it is that I was going to say about, you said that you, you, you don't think you've had a near death experience. Um, and so then you went off and started talking about something. But what I want to tell people is that the, the, the vast majority of people that I'm now seeing and the overwhelming majority of the people that are going to be waking up are people that are not going to have NDEs, near death experiences. They're going to have what's called STEs, which are spiritually transformative experiences. And if they're not having those and they're having OBEs, right? We live, live in acronyms, which, which are out of body experiences, which could be folded into spiritually transformative experiences. Mm -hmm. But that's the overwhelming majority for every one person that had a near death experience will come back and talk about it. There's going to be at least a thousand, if not 10,000 or 100,000 people that are going to experience STEs. Yeah. And so for people that are actually experiencing all these highs and lows, these ups and downs, okay, know that some of that is part of what you're, part of what you're experiencing is the process of an STE. Now, an STE sometimes comes in the form of some sort of clairvoyant or paranormal or something supernatural. I, I mean, that, that could hit you right between the eyes, okay? And like, I know that in your case, Lois, it's been a series of STEs. Because mm -hmm. you've had all of these experiences throughout your life, and then you then you really really upped it up by doing the the medicinal and the sacred plants to really get you there, and I know as, as well with your with your husband, that's what most people are going to go through, and that's why I encourage people, as you have been encouraging them, to take a chance with doing something different. If they're not into meditation or they don't know how to do meditation, they're not sure how to gamble with spirituality and whatever that means, mm -hmm. take a leap of faith and do some sacred plants. Do something that's going to help you to remember who you are so you can have an STE moment and mm -hmm. then you're off to the races, which I think is really where things changed for you was when you started having those STE moments, those spiritually transformative experiences through the plants because those plants are supposed to guide you through that experience to help you start living your life the way you're supposed to. So I would say that's going to be the most significant. And right now for a lot of people that ST is real subtle and it comes in these waves and it's highs and lows and depressions and fears and all this stuff that comes purging out of you. It, like I said, it's not going to always be like a dramatic, experience where you, you get in a car accident and you're not dead but you're all of a sudden see something or you lift up a car because you have to you have to get your child out of it those are really dramatic examples of STEs but they're they're going to be there they're all I mean I've seen so many STE experiences I've talked to so many people in that arena um, and they didn't even realize that they were having a spiritually transformative experience but that's what it is well, I, I know why they haven't, including myself. I had a deep, deep religion wound and I had shut down the spiritual side of myself 15, 16 years ago. And so I was focused so much on the mind, which I feel like our society is obsessed with the subconscious mind, the Joe Dispenza work, even like all of the rah-rah seminars, you know, and, and you have all of these things where you're still looking outside yourself for the answers. Right. And so mm -hmm. until for me, because of all of the things I have listed before, I was just so stuck in the analytical mind, which is what you reminded me of. And when I read your book, 
I had forgotten, of course, I needed to be remembering that we have the feminine side of the brain, the intuition, the compassion, right. the creativity, the artistic, which you said earlier, I just want to reinforce that to people. If you don't believe it's called 5D or Age of Aquarius or awakening, um, the, 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 the feminine energy is coming in is what's helping us go through this process with hopefully as much ease and grace and love and compassion is possible because it's um it's helping rebalance your brain, rebalance your body and your spirit. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll tell you, I, I will say this. And, you know, I, like I said, I, I things have changed quite dramatically for me. And I've had these opportunities to talk to people and be on these shows a lot. And I, I will tell you that there isn't that resistance anymore that I'm seeing uh, to when you and I started talking about this a couple of years back. You know, obviously your audience was a little bit different and maybe there's still a lot of that audience still here and have, and have really listened to your message and have really changed their lives with it. But the audience that I knew that was out there at that time was an audience that was like, OK, so how do I translate this down, you know, really drill it down to my life and what I'm doing with my business and, and all sorts of things. And and it was a little bit abstract. But now these these same abstract notions are not as abstract as they used to be and they're really starting to hit home with people that the way in which we used to see ourselves okay whether it's whether you're talking about a person who's dealing with business issues or marital issues or what have you they're still people and they're still spiritual beings and they're realizing that these abstract concepts or notions are starting to settle in and are making sense to them now they may not still know what it's what it's about but what I tell people a lot is that the days of just being able to sort of, OK, I'll deal with that later. I know that that's an important part of my life, that I need to deal with spirituality, religion or something along those lines. That's going to have to come someday. But right now I got to deal with what's happening with my life right now. But the problem is, is that what's happening right now is exactly it has to do with your with you coming to some sort of terms with who you are as a spiritual being. And the way that we move forward in this world is not going to allow you to push that under the rug anymore. It's, it, it is going to put it right in your face because everything, and I've said this to you for quite some time, but now it's starting to show itself. Everything, everything, everything that is what we believe is our reality is about to have some massive, massive overhauls. Everything. Now you say, oh, well, but I'm looking at CNN or some other thing. But those are old rerunning videos of things that have been part of our psyche for so long. What I'm talking about are the things that are boiling up to the surface that millions, tens of millions, hundreds of millions of people are beginning to experience some sense of awareness that things aren't meant to be this way anymore. And as that happens, you just cannot anymore put that aside and say, well, I'll deal with that tomorrow. I got to make money today. Because if you realize that what you're putting under the rug is the exact same thing that actually has kept you from making that money, then you would actually start saying, OK, maybe I would. Maybe that's not the right answer. I mean, the re reason to look at it. But my point is that you just cannot avoid it anymore. It's coming in hard and fast. And you can keep pushing under the rug and you can keep telling yourself this is something else, old wounds or things of that nature. And there's some truth to that, but you have to start dealing with it right now. And that's what I keep telling people on all of these shows. The time for waiting, for looking for something out there to help answer all the questions you have, those days are over. And I'm telling people now that the only thing that's holding us back from having the life that we want, the one that we desire individually and as a society, is us. We've been waiting thousands of years for mm -hmm. something to happen in the sky or something biblical of some nature. Right. When we didn't realize that for thousands of years, all we've been doing, all we needed to do, or what we've been, what we didn't know was that we've been waiting for ourselves. We've mm -hmm. been waiting for ourselves. And that the time now is now to, to come to that realization. And I, it's kind of a risky call, but that's what I've been told to tell people. And so I'm telling that to tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people on these shows. It's now we've been waiting for us. That's all we've been waiting for. All of a sudden I have that song. It's now or never. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's a perfect song. And, you know, I, I will tell you that things like that happen because 
your your intuitive higher self is giving you little 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 things like that to kind of you know join in on what I'm trying to say because it is now or never. There is no there's no reason for it to be someday someday someday. It's now. It's it's always been now, and the only person that's holding us back is ourselves. Yeah. So, uh, and that's the that's the that's sort of the as I'm talking to a lot of people that is resonating with so many people and they're saying it in different ways and they're saying you know franco i'm hearing it this way and everything everything is pointing to this time now so it, whether we want to or not whether your listeners are looking for the magic bullet well this is the magic bullet which means that you have to you have to start doing some re, some introspection and realizing that's not that difficult to do but you have to start doing it. It's always been in you, nowhere else. When you do that, as you know, your life changes. Your life has changed dramatically because you started to do that. I, oh remember, I remember telling you, Lois, someday, you know, this is what's going to happen. And you go, nah. <laughs> <laughs> I just summed it up. You did. You actually used words, but that was sort of what came out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we try to do our best to make this a family friendly show. So he's basically <laughs> saying he doesn't want to swear on live TV. So it's yeah. all good. No, yeah. It's all good. Yeah. I want to remind people too. I know um, it's a it's a big day and I, and I know you're not into the astrology as much as I am, but I, I, I will say this solar eclipse um, that was two, three weeks ago now. And then this lunar eclipse today, I find it not ironic that Franco and I were going to do this two weeks ago, right around the solar eclipse and it just didn't happen. And so here we are on the back end of that. Our friends, Alexander Quinn, Linda Good McGillis talked about the intensities of these two weeks. So even if you are resisting to use that word, what you've resisted is persisted. I, I even with all the work I've done this week, I had some more grief and sadness bubble up to the surface that I hadn't felt yet. I hadn't allowed to move through, which, you know, again, could you could say a little bit of a depression. Depression yeah, again, is yeah. about things that happened in the past that you wish didn't. If you're feeling anxiety, it's because you're thinking too much about the future. So what Franco and I are talking about is how can you make friends with this moment and allow that stuff to move through you because the the eclipse today is all about secrets it's all about anything that ha you've been stuffing down suppressing resisting it's it's coming to the surface i've had conversations this week that's why i want to bring this up with people that are in my community that have have found out things from their childhood they never knew or understood, and it explained their alcoholism, it explained their their addiction issues, it explained their anger, it explained so much about their life. So this stuff, if it's come up for you guys, this is why we're also sharing this. If you, you've got to be with that stuff, allow it to move through, go back into the womb, so to speak, um, and to allow yourself to be like a child and just to to heal, love yourself, um, don't judge. I, I have a huge background in being overly self-critical, so I understand how that kind of stuff can come up if, if something happened for you and now you're the secret is emerging and you're like, what the what? Um, you gotta have tools, you gotta have support, uh, which is why I've built my community, why Franco does um, what he does, I, I will say, Franco, I don't think anybody can process and do this awakening completely alone. Do you? It's tough. <laughs> I mean, there are a lot of people that are doing it right now that way. I mean, back in the day, that's the way that I had to do it because we, you know, without dating myself too much, because I know that you already, you already kind of have me as this grandfather figure in your life. <laughs> Um, and I keep telling you, we're not that different in age, but uh, okay. But in any event, um, you know, those who came here uh, to wake up earlier to help others have had to do this on their own. They really had to to figure this out, and it was by intent. We, we had to walk the talk and, and really know how to do it on our own. That's not the case in this se sequence of awakening events. Um, there's a lot more to talk about, but but the, we're not at that point anymore where we're trying to do this on our own. We're, we're learning to remember how to to use what we already know and 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 work with guides and teachers and others, if need be, to help get you through 
to the to the finish line. Um, it, it's it's yeah, it's not something that you're going to get extra brownie points for doing this on on your own or for suffering more than than others. That's not the intent. And you know, unfortunately, we don't have the time to talk about that. But I do want to say that in that spirit of of you know what you've gone through, your trials and tribulations, the way that I that I work with with people is that I I try to I try to get them to see that all of those trials and tribulations were actually events of unconditional love that it, that happened to you in order for you to get to this point mm. where you can start realizing that you came here to wake up. And I always tell them, and, and for the most part, people really do resonate with this, that no matter what their life circumstances were. And I got to tell you that I've heard a lot of different, very hard life circumstances. Most of them, once they can get beyond the fact that they've had those very traumatic experiences mm -hmm. and realize that in the bigger picture, these were events that happened for them, by them, when they came here mm -hmm. in order to help them wake up to who they really are as divinity so that they can be light to themselves and others, mm -hmm. then it made it easier for them to finally say their peace, bless the event, and move on with their lives so they could focus on what was to them the most important thing which was all right so i got all this now i want to wake up i want i want to have what you have you know i want to be able to be a light to myself and a light to others let's go and that really helps them to really get beyond those issues so much faster so for people that are going through the same thing, and everybody has their story that's why i said my first half of the book is all about my trials and tribulations mm -hmm. For those who have them, this isn't a, this isn't about re-examining everything in your life. You, you get it, you receive it, and you let it go mm -hmm. so that you can do what you came here to do, which was to wake up, to wake up so you can be the light, so you can have that life that you want to have. You can have that for others who you love. You can have that for the world. And so to you, so kind of circling back to the lunar eclipse, you know, when I say I'm not into astrology, it's just because that's not an area that I focus on, but I do respect it. And I do know that astrology at this point is very pivotal because on a side note, I, for anybody who even cares to know this, I don't believe that the, that the moon is the moon. Uh, the moon is not the moon. It was put there for a specific reason. And it was put there for a specific reason relative to what I told you, the combination of the alignment of locks. And so I'm really mm -hmm. big on locks and keys, multidimensional portals. The moon was a very important key or part of a lock system that once it aligns perfectly, it would activate a flood of downloads, energetic signatures or binary codes or DNA sequencing, whatever you want to call it. It would do that. But because the moon had to be created for that purpose and there's a lot of science behind this okay yeah. that because the moon had to be created specifically for that it doesn't align with most of the science that has to do with all the moons that, that, that circle other planets it's just a little different let's just put it that so this is a very big event because as i said before just like alexander quinn and and, and his guest um this is a major download most of the time that we get these we usually get waves of of, of of purging you know it's not about purging it will happen but this is a download this is where something is actually going to be activated in you so that you can start to realize who you are and live life easier as the days weeks and months go on it may not feel that way right after the lunar eclipse but as you get into the end of the year and into next year and into the years to come, which, as you know, there's all in my book and I've talked to you about this. There's a whole timeline to how this is all going to work out. And this is all going to work out within the next seven to eight, nine years where we're where the way that we live life today is going to be dramatically different than the way that we're going to be living life in that period. And that's hard for people to even put their heads around because you look back 10 years ago you say oh yeah there have been changes but not huge changes this is massive changes i mean beyond our wildest dreams which is why we have to start coping with these changes in our psyche we can't keep putting them under the rug 
it just we just can't anymore. Well, and to your point, this is what I've noticed with myself, but also clients and people. And I, I don't want to like cause we talked about fear earlier. I don't want to impress fear on other people, but I feel like if you're not listening and slowing down, the universe will find a way to ground you so that yeah. you I've seen people have broken ankles. I've seen people have car accidents. I've seen people get really, really sick. Someone was sick for a whole month because I personally, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. I feel like we're just being grounded as a society yes. to be able to wake up and have more time because we're not taking the time. Yeah, you're, you're spot on. And the biggest example of that, because people, okay, so people talk about third dimensional energy and how that's heavy and dense and that's what we're living in. And then this supposed fifth dimensional energy that's coming in, but nobody talks about the fourth dimensional energy, which uh, is which is the canal, the, the link that between the third and the fifth, which, oops, you know, you have to go through the fourth in order to get to the fifth. And the fourth is all about awareness. And there's various levels of awareness. But to your point, you're not going to become aware of that if you're running around with your head cut off every day of your life. All right. So what did what did the universe do? And when I say the universe, what did we do collectively as a consciousness? What did we decide to do at this time period to slow ourselves down in this game that we're playing of third dimension? We create a COVID. OK, and that and I'm not sure if I'm supposed to say it that way, but but I don't care. So that's what it is. You know, we'll um, refer to it as the pandemic because uh, the the powers that be don't like the C word. OK, so we'll, dil we'll dilute that. We'll do that. Take that back. It's the power. That's the pandemic. OK, we created the pandemic and that is what caused us to have a major slowdown, a major time for us to realize what's important for ourselves and for each other. And that didn't go, I mean, the pandemic effects are still here, not the physical ones, but the spiritual and psychological ones. They keep telling us that they're, that life cannot continue the way that, it, that it's continuing or had continued up until that moment. So that was a major slowdown. And that has resulted in, so, in why we're having these abilities to massively shift the way that we didn't have even three, four years ago. And I'm not saying that that's going to happen again, but to your point, you can not resist or you cannot continue to resist the calling. I call it the calling and, and you cannot continue. It's just five, six, seven years ago, five, six, seven, eight months ago, two years ago when we were talking, we could talk about this and we could give people the sense of, okay, if you don't want to talk about it or feel about it or whatever now, that's okay. But it's not. It's it, the universe, again, the universe being the collectiveness of our consciousness is now saying it's time. You, you, This is part of the ascension. This is part of the awakening. You have to start to go inward to remember who you are so that you can get out of your own head, which is the prison that you've built uh, in your life, because that's the only thing that's holding you back. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, great point. It is. This is that we're 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 right here. We're now here at the dance. We're now at the dance, and that's what I've been telling people all over the world. That's what we're doing right now. No more time. You want to sit against the wall, you know? By all means, sit against the wall. But this dance, you got to dance. You got to dance it, and it's not a bad dance. It's actually a beautiful dance. Do it, and you're going to be amazed at what comes out at the other end. Don't so do weird. it. Yeah. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Finish. No, 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 don't do it. And you're going to stand along the wall. So. Well, it's so cute. You, you mentioned that because uh, under plant medicine, I started dancing again. Like I had shut down that creative artsy fartsy side of myself that, you know, intuitive, fun, playful, childlike. So literally it was a, no fooling. It was an April fool's day ceremony oh. with, uh, with mushrooms and the most perfect, person from the other side came and asked me to dance. It was Patrick Swayze. And I'm like going, hello. hello. And so I got up and I started dancing and moving my body and just remembering that embodiment as humans, right? We have that gift of waking up to who we truly are, to your point. I just want to give a few more testimonials and examples. I love it. I, I, love think, it. I think some people get confused about waking up to who I truly am. Well, what does that mean? I mean, it's fun. It's laughter. It's music. It's play. It's don't freaking take life so damn seriously. Cause that was where I was stuck, you know, paying the bills, being the mom, 
the wife trying, I had a huge savior complex, right? I wanted to try to save the world and I completely shunned myself, right? And yeah. I see so many, especially, I'm just going to throw it out there to my women out there, you know, we've been in this masculine world and we've been, um, I'm just going to say it, we've, we've been forced to grow penises and feel like we've got to, you know, compete and, and do all of this stuff. Yes, you heard me say it, right? And, and, and to our men. Wow. We're, get, we're, we're we're getting edgy here. I like this. I like this. We're getting edgy. <laughs> yeah. So, so here's Gail. I got to give Gail, my fellow sister from another mister is here talking about supporting us. Thank you so much. The empowering process podcast. We've, I think we've all been on each other's shows now. So to, to the men, I just want to finish this thought to the men. Like I've seen this with my husband and I've seen this with my male clients, you know, a lot of this, like, you've been shouldering the burden of the responsibility of the world for thousands of years, you know, being the providers, being strong, never let them see you sweat. I can't cry. I can't do this because I've got to be strong. And I, I know the, the feminine energies that's coming through is, is forcing you to, to be softer and to really just be more balanced. And I feel like those are things that I want people to hear from my own personal experience is just, just allow yourself to have fun, play, cry, um, ask for help. Um, you know, this is the age of Aquarius. We're going to collaborate more, you know, no man or woman is an Island. And, and I know that that's what our ancestors wanted, you know, back way, 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 way back. I've done so much ancestral study because of this waking up and better understanding where I came from and who I am from other planets, as well as other lifetimes and other eras. But that's the kind of stuff that got me really fired up and, and living a much healthier mental, physical, spiritually aligned life. To your point, waking up to who I truly am as a soul. Yeah. Um, yeah. I tell you, every I, what I love about when I get on shows like this now is that I, I get so much from just the vibration of what you're saying and obviously the words that you're using. Um, there's so many things here that we could go off in different directions, <laughs> but, but I will tell you that one of the things that, that you said about, um, being true to yourself, and I don't think it's a coincidence. I know it's not a coincidence that over the last 10, 15, 20 years, one of the biggest vibrational changes has been in the way that we see each other, even in our gender. And here mm -hmm. we are talking about the divine feminine coming in and being okay with that, being very okay with that. Um, and that's because one of the things I experienced when I crossed over and it's coming to fruition here now is it, this sort of emancipation of our gender, uh, of our gender identity. In other words, it used to be back in the day that it was just LGB, you know, then it became LGBT and, and then the Q. And I was like, I couldn't keep up with what they all meant. And so fortunately, they just finally got it and said, let's just put a plus at the end of it. And that would be the umbrella. Because when you trans transcend into a higher dimension, okay, whether it's through death, physical death, or, or the way that we're trying to do it now here as a hu as a human global race we're going to realize that gender is not is is really not an issue here okay because as you as you go further in dimensions gender does not exist there there there, there isn't this physical aspect or characteristic of a man and a female that does not exist in the other side okay we are just all of it we ex we experience ourselves as all of it and that's the beauty. That's the balance that, that we're trying to strike here is that we're, that's what we, what's meant by heaven on earth is bringing those elements of energy into this world. So we could start to see what the, what the playing field really looks like. So it's no coincidence that a lot of this transformation began with, 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 let's call it the fight, although that's not a really good use of a word, but the fight for gender equality, because now it's starting to, play itself out in the way that we feel we are spiritual beings because that is how we are when we cross over so so you mentioned that and then you bought your I say one more thing in response just really quick just yeah go for it go for you were it. Gonna, just to kind of tie it in when you said transgender then you said the word transcend you know it's like 
it reminded me of the word androgynous that, you know, like most aliens are androgynous, right? Um, mm-hmm. and, 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 and recognizing that, I mean, I'm just going to say it, people might be triggered, but, you know, we have galactic origins, right? This human experience uh, is, is God breathing him and her self, right? Um, to be able to, to, you know, experience life on earth is, is such a gift, but so many people have had so much judgment and, and can't transcend that thinking of just accepting and loving people for who they truly are and forget about the race and the gender and all of that kind of stuff. So I just wanted to say that once you said transgender, transcend, there was just like some kind of like magic there that I feel like, I feel like the transgender movement, even though it's really also heartbreaking to see so many trans kids committing suicide and, and, and so many people, even in the non-binary world, again, androgynous to some extent, right? Both male and female people are just tired of the labels, even though it is killing some of our, our transgender brothers and sisters. It's, it's just like, it's a wake up call. It's almost like, they're helping us recognize that with the divine feminine's help, we, we've got to let go of all of these labels because it, it divides us or, you know, makes a better than or less than kind of philosophy. Well, you know, in reality, it's only dividing a small percentage. The perception is that it's dividing so many people because there's so much, there's so many of us that don't see it that way. We may not understand it or, or be able to translate it or even absorb it and judge it properly and, or judge it at all. Um, but it, it's the perception that it's dividing because those people who came here with that with that goal of, of experiencing that kind of a life did it primarily as an act of unconditional love so that they could help us wake up to who we really are yeah. and what we really know ourselves to be. And unfortunately for some of them, they 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 before they came, and this is why this gets into a very, very sensitive discussion about about suicide. But I, I'm only telling you, I'm only the messenger here, okay? Because everything I'm doing is being translated as in real time. And what this, what they, in this particular moment of human history, of the evolution of the spiritual race that we're he, that we're here right now with, they came for the to do the act of unconditional love. And if that act required them, un, unbeknownst to them at the time when they did it, if that act requires them to commit suicide, then that's then that was part of the reason they came down here because that is the most dramatic way of expressing your unconditional love for hum for yourself and humanity by actually giving your life for for something that you believe would help the human race evolve. Kind of sounds, you know, very similar to a lot of acts of love that people have done in the past. Now, again, that's a hard jump, and I don't expect people to to accept that, but that's what they've told me, that that's can why people go through that. Can I share to maybe, like, sure. piggyback on that really quickly? Because I just did a podcast, uh, and on, it's called Suicide Zen Forgiveness. And thanks to you saying go play with ayahuasca psilocybin, that was what I discovered because I had so much guilt. All of my friends that committed suicide, it's now 12. And one of them was a murder suicide. So that was two people in, in one experience. Um, I've, I've, I've visited, you know, with these souls on the other side because of sacred plants. And they, they shared exactly what you said. You know, these were soul contracts. These were agreements from them, even yeah. losing my brother to alcoholism, addiction, yeah. same thing. Um, and, and being able to process that at the heart level, not here, right? but the heart level, I was able to heal my mind through that experience and be more connected to the bigger, unconditional, loving purpose of humanity. And there's a lot of people that I just talked to someone else yesterday it doesn't make sense unless you've, I think, gone within, done some more internal work on yourself and recognize that, or even reading the book, Radical Forgiveness, just throwing that out there to people. I, I read that as another layer um, to help me grieve and better understand exactly what you're yeah. talking about. Because at first I was like, I, I couldn't, my head couldn't understand what you're saying now. So just letting people know that it took me many, many plant medicine journeys and a lot of, you know, personal introspection and meditation to really embrace and accept what you said. So if anybody's triggered right now, 
just know that I would have been triggered, you know, two years ago. <laughs> I know. Well, and just for people to know, I don't do the plant medicine. So it's like, so it's not the plant medicine that's going through, through Lois that's kind of getting her to think this way or feel this way. It, it's just the way it is. I mean, I just channel and I get information and a lot of this information isn't what people want to hear. But here's the interesting thing. I just had a really pretty deep conversation with somebody in a different show um, and they were like, people aren't ready for this. People aren't ready for it. And I'm telling you, in whether they're not ready to hear it initially, it does eventually get through that there's something more to this that, that, that meets the eye. And I keep challenging people, not you, because I know you're ready to, to tell it the way it is, but I keep challenging people to, to, to be okay with that. Because if you're, if that's happening and you're feeling the, the need to express it from a deeper place of love, then it's, it's likely that it's coming from a deeper place of love and it should be shared with people. And so it does, it isn't easy to hear people say, Oh, you know, someone that, that died or someone that's having a horrific experience in these wars or whatever, they're doing it out, out of an act of unconditional love. But that is exactly what's happening right now in order to wake the human race up. And then one last thing that I wanted just to quickly touch upon is that you mentioned about being on an island and, and you know, where do you start? Where do you go when you go inside? Because I, I always get this question asked to me. And it's the very first thing that we start with in any session that I work with, with students or people that are just doing consultations. And that is this, there, you have to accept if just for the moment that we're together, for this, the time that you've shared with me, you have to accept there are three principles. I'm only going to talk about one, the one that we start with, okay? The truths that were given to me. And you have to accept that the place that you have to start from with anything in your healing process is knowing that you are God. And that isn't a big, that isn't an easy thing to take in because we've been told the exact opposite. But you have to start there, even if it's just for the sessions that we work on. It takes people time to realize that here you were born into original sin. And if you're if you're in some other religion, you're born into karma and all this other stuff and you're insignificant. And on top of that, you might be a woman. Oh, my God. I mean, you're just getting thrown everything but the kitchen sink at you. And, and actually, this conversation really has been effective with people of, the, of, of all faiths. But but. I've been working with some people in the hin in Hindu faith, and and it is important to understand that notion that we are God. And how do I know this? Well, I could give you a biblical reference. Go to Genesis 126, and you'll see it, okay? The God was created by us, not the other way around. And it's right there in black and white, okay? But you can also just intuitively just go there for the moment, and just realize that you are a supreme being. If you could start from there, you could start changing everything about your world immediately. The game that we exist in was to show you everything that we're not so that we could discover ourselves again in this amazing, beautiful way. It's gonna be challenging because otherwise it'd be boring, all right? But once you get there, it becomes like the video I sent you, Lois, the most blissful experience in your life to realize who you always were and you don't have to die mm -hmm. to get there anymore. We're not here to physically die anymore to experience heaven on earth. There've been a lot of great masters that have said that. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I, I want to give a quick shout out to Gail. I think we'll, we'll start wrapping it up, Franco. So if you have any closing thoughts um, and then of course where people can, can find you and, I just want to acknowledge um, Gail's comment. Absolutely. Uh, triggers are a chance to get curious. I now am grateful for my triggers. Um, even a year ago, maybe heck, even six months ago, I wasn't as grateful as I am now. It's just a way to get your attention um, yes. to say, hey, we got a little more clearing to do again, which is why you got to have the spaciousness to allow yourself to cleanse and to clear that. And, and it, it happens so much faster now, but for those of you who haven't been on this path, it, it's, you know, a journey of a thousand miles begins with that single step. So <laughs> write down when you're journey, you know, you're tr triggered journal about it. Um, that's the first thing I do is I just do like a mind dump. Um, and then, uh, you know, having support of course, along the way. So yeah. 
You know, I I, I want to just say it as kind of my parting ways. And then Gail, I I know is listening. I didn't know until she started chiming in here. But um, um, we I, I've known Gail through you. Uh, been have had the opportunity to to uh, to be with her a couple times on a, on her show. But we have this term deliciousness, and and. And that's the way that I want to kind of leave people with is that this isn't at all meant to be doom or gloom. This is all really a celebration of something that is happening right now where we're finally in this, we're in this huge state of amnesia. We're in this very deep state of, of dreaming and we're waking up to who we are and life is going to be very delicious here very, very, very soon. And the more it gets, the more you're going to desire it. And so just hang on as we go through this, treat it like a little child would. Enjoy it. Like you said, be in wonderment of it. Be curious, as Gail's talking about. This is all a way in which to come back home. And we're really there. We are really there. And when you get there, as it is when you die, you're welcomed by so many beautiful people. So get ready. It's about to happen. And it's going to be a beautiful experience for everybody. Yeah. And I've I've started feeling so much more bliss. I've started feeling so much more of that unconditional love for myself and seeing it in others. And so, guys, just um, even though some of this might have been esoteric, some of this might have been triggering um, we hope you got a lot of value. I'm also going to drop in the show notes um, for posterity Franco's uh, documentary where he shares and talks about his near-death experience and this waking up period. And uh, maybe I'll even drop in the, uh, the, the, is it okay if I drop the link that you sent me yesterday? Yeah, yeah please so, do that. I think those are great links. Those are great videos. Um, there's uh there's another video since we're talking about things that people can that could help be that could be very helpful to them. If you go on YouTube, there's a, a video called Sumadhi S U M A D H I. There's a three part series to it. It's a deep, profound exploration, but it speaks to you at, at a soulful level. I don't care who you are, what background background you have. It's a really beautiful video. I believe it triggers things and people in a very positive way. So any of those things, the ones that you put down at the link, uh, I mean, the links that you put down, including the documentary, my documentary, all of those are going to be helpful. At this point, it's about giving people everything they could possibly get in order to wake up. And then you asked me, you know, uh, if people want to get my book, uh, please go to the theclosetspiritualist.com. Uh, make sure you put the thaw because there's another one, another website that, that doesn't have it and people might get confused, but it's thecloset.spiritualist.com. You can get information on how to get my book there through the various bookstores um, and just general information, other information about the workshops and other things that I do there. So beautiful. And I know Franco and I are going to do a workshop in the future. Yeah, very excited about that planning something hopefully in Minnesota as well as online. So stay tuned. Uh, just a couple of quick announcements. Then I have one final question for you, Franco. I just want to remind you guys, I am a plant medicine woman, plant medicine mama, microdosing, coaching, the testimonials and the transformations of my 30 day jumpstart clients are just really heartwarming. Um, people bringing their power back, people going inward, having releases and things that they didn't have before. Uh, you can go and check out my podcast where I actually talk about suicide and what plant medicine has taught me, as well as just uh, connecting with uh, a lot of different deep, deep, deep dive healing work. Um, go to microdosingforhealth.now that site. And I will be um, putting in the show notes. I don't have the link to put up on the screen. I do have an inner child cleansing masterclass uh, coming up on May 23rd. So if you're still looking for wanting some support to help cleanse and clear away, because a lot of, at least for me, a lot of my triggers came from childhood stuff, as well as death, loss, grief, and, and created a lot of that fear addiction that we were talking about earlier and a lot of resistance because it was so painful to go inside and look at that stuff. Um, so we're creating more and more things, including Franco's workshop down the road. I even have a mother wound class next week in time for Mother's Day. For those of you who are struggling with your relationship with your mom or maybe as a mom or whatever that means for you, um, I'm going to be teaching that class next week 
uh, Thursday. I'll put that in the show notes as well. So always wanted to provide hope, value um, to help you improve your health, your wealth, consciousness, and help you uh, as well wake up through healthy and wealthy and wise. So Franco, thanks again for being here today. Uh, you. If you guys saw value, uh, sharing is caring, please hit the share button or, or text this um, podcast to someone. And uh, if you can, of course, read Franco's book and check out his uh, tools that I put in the show notes. So Franco, I've asked you this question before, so it's always fun to see if uh, the answer is evolved <laughs> and see what you and Caleb bring through. Uh, but when you hear the phrase healthy and wealthy and wise, what does that mean for you today? Healthy, wealthy, and wise. I think of Lois. No, just uh, <laughs> <laughs> wisdom seems to come through a lot. And I know that's part of your whole sort of slogan, but it's about being true to yourself from the heart and not from the head anymore. And from mm -hmm. that really is the cornerstone of healthy and, and, and the, the wisdom and wise. I mean, the healthy, wealthy, wise, all of that seems to center around wisdom. And, and to stop leading your life through your head, but through your heart instead. Beautiful. Beautiful. Well, thanks guys for tuning in. We'll see you next time, whenever the spirit leads. Uh, I, I don't have a, a guest for a couple of weeks, um, but you'll for sure see me and doing some inspired uh, channeled uh, monologues here. I, I know coming up. And so I hope you guys have an amazing weekend. Again, happy eclipse, happy full moon. If you're tuning in on the live, if you're on the replay, I'm just sending you so much love as we sign off until next time. Here's to your best health, your best wealth. And again, trusting that best wisdom through the heart um, so that you can have a clear mind, a clear channel and wake up to who you truly are. Bye-bye for now.